Welcome to the 131st ever episode of the next podcast. I'm Alex. I'm Jimmy. And I'm Polka Kills. What is up, my homies? We are back in Los Angeles town, chilling, grilling, on schedule villains. Back at it again at Krispy Kreme. <laughs> the best vine of all time. If you are joining us for the first time, <laughs> welcome. This is a Pokemon podcast. We are the hosts and team and crew behind the decks on YouTube, or at least three of the people involved in that that fine and it's long established show. <laughs> um, but uh, we're here. We do this every week. It's going to be Pokemon news. It's going to be Pokemon discussions. We read fan mail every week. It's going to be a grand old time. Uh, but before we talk about the world of Pokemon, how was your guys' Pokemon week? Mine was good. <laughs> Mine was what does good. that mean? I mean, like, uh, charge, like, like the last time we checked in, it was like Saturday, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like my Sunday was like another day of conning at, uh, I mean, not conning people, but like going to Being a con. at the convention. Being yeah. at a con. Got it. Um, and so that was really fun. Um uh, let's see. Did anything else Pokemon happen? Oh, I got a uh, I got a little Mew from the I Love Mew collection, and I got a little Liberty Pikachu at the swap meet. Um, that's an import from Japan. I don't remember if um, we talked about that already or not. But I, I think the Mew, yes, but the Liberty Pikachu I got like that night. So oh, that's right yeah. at the swap meet. When I got I got oh this dude shout out to this dude. He gave me um Pokemon Sapphire uh, a card of that for five dollars. Nice. That's a pretty good great, deal. Good great deal. I actually um, did great in that in that uh, swap meet too. Yeah, yeah, you got a lot of cool things too, huh? Yeah, I got a I got a copy of um of uh Rising Revengeance. Sick. Shout Rising, out to George Weedman. Rising Zan. Samurai Rising Gun Zan, Man. Samurai <laughs> Gunman uh for PS3. Uh no, but it was tight. I got it for ten bucks, actually nine dollars because that's all I had in my wallet. And uh it was the Walmart version that comes with the soundtrack. Oh sick. Yeah. And it was unopened, sealed. Great. Pretty cool stuff. Congrats. Uh anything else? Uh I don't think so. I got a copy of the Pokemon Sun and Moon Pokedex, like the Gen 7 Pokedex oh, yeah. in the mail. I read uh, the interview in the front. Yeah. So good. Um, so it, it, I bought the like collector's edition version. I'm not ex exactly sure whether well, what stuff is exclusive to that. I believe that like the guide itself is the same for both. But um, the collector's version that we have has like an interview with Amori and Masuda-san in the front. And it's the same interview that we took the quote from. Uh, for the Tapu Lele yeah, episode? Yeah, for the Tapu Lele episode. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's originally from. I don't think that it was just for that guide because it seems like it was done by a Japanese guy and that would be pretty... I feel like that's a little bit like beyond what they're willing to do for a guide. Like Pokemon doesn't usually like pull out the stops like that. But uh, it, was a, it was a good interview, really interesting, insightful, like... I know we were talking about this that you were saying like it's pretty like nice to see that they're thinking about the same stuff that we're thinking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was so cool. I was I was so happy to see that. It was um uh the thing that in particular that was getting me so hyped up was the fact that they were using terms like uh, Galapagos Islands and invasive species, which are like things that we've extensively covered on the decks as I like explanations what, yeah, for I, why Pokemon look certain ways. I wonder what and, they like, think. I was so, I was like, I'm a genius. I, I was in the other room. I'm and a genie. And like, I was like, <laughs> Alex, I'm a genius. I was right. But it's, it's just really cool to know that like, that's like that scientific thinking is like the way that they're designing Pokemon. Like very, very cool. Great stuff. That's hype. I'm look, I like it, and I'm, like, very much back in the game. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it was after our panel that I started. Uh, but right afterwards, I went to the battle tree to do the super, because I, I beat the, like, 20-man uh, double battle thing in the battle tree, like, right away. Like, mm -hmm. I sat down while I was waiting for my flight back to L.A. from Boston and just, like, knocked it out, and you beat Blue at the end of that, and that was really cool. And then I did the super one, like after our panel and I did it for like, I kept coming back to it for like, maybe like, I don't know, 18 hours. I, I played till round 73 and it was <laughs> crazy because like, you know, my team was pretty much bodying anything that came out. Right. Mm -hmm. But then they started like cheating. They had like more legendaries than <laughs> I did. They were having like legendary birds. They were having like the, the, um, the like musketeer horse guys. Yeah. It was crazy. Like it was like cheater style. I eventually lost because I missed twice with like 5% inaccurate attacks. Oh god. And, th and then I flinched from an attack that's not like fake out. Yeah, and then that's I rough. Yeah, it was it was crazy. And then they got like four hits on me cuz it was holding a choice ban. I finally lost at 73, but I couldn't I couldn't believe. I got like 500 battle points. 
That's like, great. It was so many. I, I bought. I That's fought tons blue. of points, man. I fought blue. I fought Grimsley twice. I fought. I fought Cynthia. I fought um, some little kid. It was crazy. There was a bunch <laughs> of stuff. Some <laughs> kid. I love that. That's a notable person to mention. Like he was like one Blue, of the like Cynthia, some some guy. He was like one of the like every ten basically. The way it works, it's pretty cool in the battle tree. Like you start by getting I think one battle point per battle, uh -huh. or maybe it's two. I can't remember. And then like you finish ten, and then you start getting two per battle. And then you finish ten, and then you get three per battle all the way up till seven, and then it stays at seven. Nice. So I'm pretty sure it starts with two, and then goes to seven because I definitely had seven for like twenty or so. I don't know, but. The thing that was crazy was like, I never like usually that thing like gets cheater style like way earlier, and I got pretty far, and I felt so empty at the end that I was just like, man, like, what do I do now? If you get to a hundred, don't you get something? Um, no, I, I, you, well, I'm not sure actually, but if you get to uh, fifty, you get the stamp. Ah. So I don't know. I don't know if there's a hundred stamp. I'll cry if there is. <laughs> Um, but the guide is really cool. I've been like back into Pokemon, just like playing it. I did the Ultra Beast quests on my personal game. Mm -hmm. Got a million dollars from Looker. Learned Ooh. some stuff. Did you finish that quest? No, I way? didn't. There's a little bit of uh there's a little bit of if you stuff like Anna, if you like Annabelle, there's some I love good, Annabelle. there's some juicy stuff about Annabelle in that storyline and some juicy stuff about Nanu and Looker in that storyline. Mm. Yeah, um <clears throat> I I guess if we're talking light on it and not spoiling it, I'm actually did some research on that to help write a video uh it was actually just yesterday but um i didn't know about annabelle i didn't know about the like extra stuff in looker's past yeah and um and definitely about nanu yeah a lot of like cool stuff revealed about everybody explains his name too which is interesting because i thought that was kind of a silly name because mm -hmm. it reminds me of more uh nanu nanu mm -hmm. but uh yeah <laughs> but uh it makes total sense now it's similar to the way that Looker's name is. Um, and uh, do you have any idea who that third person is, Jimmy, if we're not spoiling? Uh, Annabelle? Not, the, not Annabelle, but there was, a, there was a third person in the story that they told that, that maybe didn't get so far in life. Um, I, hmm. well, everything that I read said it was I'm an so unnamed lost. person. That's... that's that's what I thought, but I, I I wonder if it's somebody. I wonder if there's like some sort of oh, way. Oh, okay. Um, as far as I know, it is nobody. But if only there was like a show committed to this is so confusing. Yeah, I mean, we're trying not to spoil it. I really I, want, I really want you to like. Do you know what we're talking about? Though? No, not even a yeah, lick. I really like. It's okay. If, if you're halfway through that quest, you're about to like know everything that I'm talking about. Great, like, the great. next time you catch an. So let's just like skip it because like I feel like this is this is just like a party of like of like maybe what this is, is like, this? This is this like is, when you watch Lost with somebody who's already seen it. Yeah. This is <laughs> every this is every conversation that I ever had when The Witness came out and when Zelda came out right. was like, <laughs> but have you done the? Thing. It's so mysterious. Every single person that I've ever talked to about Zelda, by the way, since we're talking about that real quick, <laughs> every single person has told me that they flipped that maze upside down. Oh, yeah. Every single <clears> person, <throat> they're like, I, I flipped it upside down. I'm like, I I know. <laughs> I think we all did. I, I Not only did I flip it upside down, like, I think most people flip it upside down and then turn it around and, like, you know, just, like, roll it onto the ramp. Yeah. I flipped it upside down, and I flung You, that, like, threw it with the flat side? That mf -er. That's so yeah, funny. I, I launched it. I just, like, I was like, I'm going to spin it in a random direction, and I did, and I launched it directly into the cup. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, felt so good. Luckily, Kay. point is, I got the guide. <laughs> I'm going to, uh... <laughs> I'm going to beat everything in the game now. I'm excited to like have a post game guide that's like itemized and clear. Like I know it's accessible in other places, but I've always liked having the Pokemon guides and it's it's really just kind of part of the fun for me to like follow the guide and knock out the tasks in it. Yeah, uh, honestly, uh Pokemon guides are kind of nostalgic for me cuz when I was much younger, um I used to get the guides for like everything. I really enjoyed reading them. Right. Like even if even games that I didn't have like but I liked I yeah. would have a guide and like read through it, but I always had a guide for like, I think every Pokemon that I played, I think I had one for all of gens one through four. Um, but then like, you know, I fell off after four and I didn't get into black and white until I met up with you guys a few years back. So like, I think at my parents' house, I probably still have all those guides, probably a little like torn up or uh, weathered, but they were, they were owned by a kid. Right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, 
yeah, that was definitely part of my ritual. Like when I used to go to like Borders or Barnes and Noble, I would like go to the guide section and be like, what guides are there? Um, even if I didn't have the game. Um, but yeah, that that's my Pokemon week. I, I'm, I'm excited to like knock that out. What about you, Jimmy? Uh, pretty much just <clears throat> the thing that I was mentioning. Like I didn't do too much Pokemon oh, stuff. Oh, you did like, that video this week? Uh, it was, it, it's, I helped do some research on it. Um, that's really awesome. But yeah, I, I was literally like writing some stuff down. I'm looking at uh, Looker's page on uh, Bulbapedia and stuff just for like starting points the other day. So I, I like learned stuff about um, his role in Sun and Moon that I didn't know, which was neat. But um, Sick. like literally my week was I needed to finish Zelda. To so be on the podcast. To be on the TOVG podcast, the spoiler cast about it. Uh, by the way, if you like Zelda and you've beaten it and you want to hear about that, we got Jaywitz on to be on that podcast. So um, I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close. Well, like, I don't know how close I am, but I'm, I'm, uh, I beat two temples now and I'm like, kind of like into the idea of playing some more of them. Cause I'm like kind of getting swept up in the story now. Yeah. It's, it's a good time. I think um, I'm going to find the, I think I'm going to find all the memories and then go from, go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aside from that, not really, not really much in the Pokemon department. Like, I feel. I don't know. You should you should give it a shot. It's a fun game. Like the <laughs> <laughs> the the looker stuff has made me a little more interested in going back and finishing Sun and Moon and doing the post game, uh, getting the Ultra Beasts. But um, I love I love that you that you get multiples so that you can trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really cool. Yeah, I I like that it's not just like everything's a, a one and done. That it's like a, more of a species like other Pokemon. Exactly. I think I think that I I think all in all. The Ultra Beast quest is more successful than the weird, like, robot suit quest. <laughs> you think? Very weird. I yeah. really liked that. I thought that was a great. I thought that was a great quest too. But this one is the lore stuff is meaty. You actually get something worthwhile out of it. Like I, I already did half the quest to go get Cartana and Pokemon Sun. Mm. Like it's a fun quest. Like I like catching the Ultra Beast because they're not like frustratingly hard to catch. Mm. It's cool. Anyway. I guess you should finish that. I just like have so much to do. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of things that Can't are even play ha- Horizon. <laughs> speaking of speaking of things that are um, happening and that people do, let's jump into the news. Welcome to the news, darlings. Now, I know that sounded like a bad segue, mm. but if you think about it, that's exactly what news is. <laughs> so, who's the true? bad host <laughs> two new 3ds themes have been released in japan the first is uh like pokemon shiny tapu koko it's like basically art of shiny tapu koko mm-hmm. and also lichen rock and galissapod and kamo and Couple it has cool the boys. guardian and it has the guardian battle music from uh, pokemon sun and moon cool okay so that's tight it's weird that that is a thing unless we're gonna get like because usually when something comes out in japan it like drops almost immediately in the U.S. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. It's always like a couple days out. Right, but it's like never like right away. But what I'm saying is like, are we gonna get an American or like Western or European like shiny Tapu Koko event before then? Ah, uh, true. Oh yeah, that's interesting. You I know what know. I mean? It's weird. Um, but when you when you said Guardian battle music, I thought Zelda immediately. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I I just imagine how hilarious it would be every time you open your 3ds just to be like. What's what's Zelda? It's um this game that you should play um after you speed through the rest of Horizon. No, take my time. <laughs> it's like it's Horizon, but it's like prettier. Yeah, and better, and cooler, neater, funner, <laughs> funner, more interesting. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm I'm not gonna hate on Horizon. That game, looks, that game looks incredible. Yeah, I want to play it a lot. It is it is fantastic. I, um, I only have enough room in my life for one open world game at a time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But there is uh, that is only one of the themes. There's another theme that is the Pokemon Team Skull theme. Yo, Jimmy, charge that 3ds. Features artwork <laughs> of Team Skull and it has the Team Skull like music from Sun and Moon. They're obviously only available in Japan right now, as we said. But like I said, they're probably gonna drop like within the next couple weeks. Right. So. Now would be the time if you were somebody who knows how to change your theme, but like maybe needs to brush up on the we details. We all definitely know Absolutely. how to do it. It's right. not an issue of us not knowing how to do it. 
It's an issue of us not understanding why you would how someone could do it. And if they did do it, what would be the process that they used to do it? Yeah, it's it's really this it's like a, you know, it's like it's like a cultural thing like you get to learn how other people would go about doing something you like find out changing their how 3DS to theme. change your 3ds theme finally i mean if how you, you could finally change it right like spiritually finally yeah, yeah. like at last yeah. yeah i've changed it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh the more the more we do that yeah the less pe- the less people will get it because the less they listeners have to we will have heard have. the first yeah. time that we did that <laughs> yeah like two years ago when <laughs> we did it for the first time um can somebody any knowledgeable Dexcast listener out there, please do not waste your time searching for this if you don't innately know, but please tell me <laughs> innately know. But please tell me when we first did the 3DS theme I, bit. Yeah. I, would I will lo- go back and listen. I would to love that. to know. I know that it was at least up to the time when the ghost theme was available in the eShop. <laughs> right. you, have a ti- you have a time frame. <laughs> that's when that's, the Ghost that's House the- Mario theme came out on the 3DS eShop in America. It was around that time. Because Alex got it, so it was probably within a couple weeks of that. Exactly. Probably. Yeah. I have a different uh, 3DS now, even. But <laughs> so my- you, oh. never, you never changed the theme on that other one. That's right. I Still mean, like, like, really, how, why, would like, he, why would he? Yeah. yeah. How could someone could do it, he? and how do they do it? Anyway, <laughs> uh, for those of you who participated in the recent global mission, uh, this was the one for earning three points at the battle tree. Or actually, as many points as we can. But if you earn three points on your own, uh, which I totally did, uh, you can now go get your uh, prizes through uh, the Global Link via serial code. If you log into your Global Link, you get a code for five rare candy and one heavy ball. It can be redeemed until April 30th, so you got some time. And look out for the next global mission, uh, which is Hatching Eggs and starts on March 28th. Um, Get your eggs ready. Hashtag don't get, get your eggs ready. Don't get your eggs too ready, though, because they'll hatch before. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. Hashtag egg That would prep. be too sad. Yeah. Hilda will brief you once again on March 28th to remind you to do that. <laughs> but just get your eggs ready. Get them ready. Prep those eggs. Get prep them eggs. Get them reggy. Pregs. Nah. <laughs> My body is reggy. <laughs> My body is eggy. <laughs> My body is eggy. Help. <laughs> Hashtag help. Hashtag <laughs> My body is eggy. Uh... The Pokemon Company have finally announced the next EU and USA trading card game set. It's called Guardians Rising. Comes with over 140 new cards and 12 new GX cards. It's coming out May 5th. I got the press release for this. I'm excited. I'm really going to try and get them to send us some cool um, swag for this that we can do an opening and maybe give some away like we have in the past. Oh, that'd be great. It's been really successful to like whenever we do that. So um, hopefully we can get some. I love doing pack openings. It's really fun. Um, and now that you know how to do it on your own, it's like even more fun. We could do it even more often. Yeah. Um, but yeah, get hyped for that. There's I haven't gonna be really... like tons of different openings of stuff. I love opening stuff. Yeah. I haven't I haven't like checked I haven't like checked this out yet. I don't really know like what the main cards are uh, or what the GX cards are, but 140 cards is a lot for just an expansion. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tons. big. Um also, uh Pokemon Go. A new update is rolling out that adds a very small but like pretty like necessary thing considering the introduction of the Johto Pokemon. The seven day first Pokestop of the day streak, which Mm -hmm. if you guys don't remember, you just have to spin one Pokestop every day. Right. Every time you do that seven days in a row, you will now be rewarded with a random evolution item, which you can usually only find uh, with a one less than 1% chance at Pokestops. So that's a pretty like these items are pretty tough to get. Um, but if you're playing all the time and you're walking around, theoretically, you should get one once a week. And since, that's pretty good. Yeah, since I since I started playing the Johto on like the day it dropped, I've only gotten, uh, I've gotten three items total and I know that's lucky. My brother, I don't know how he does it. He just gets everything, including Ditto and all the evolution items. Not all of them, but he's had a lot of them. He probably just plays... A lot yeah, more than yeah, you do. he's on a college campus, so like whatever. Um, but uh, but my sister, who lives in like a slightly more rural area, she's like, "How do I find these items? I've not seen one." And I'm like, "They're just you at Pokestops." Pokestops but Stops, now yeah. everybody gets a chance, no matter where you are, as long as you spin one Pokestop for seven days in a row, you get one of those items. Yeah, and if Very you got good. a spot, and if you got a spot that you go to when you play, where you're like spinning a couple per day, you'll probably get like 
an extra one every once in a while too, which yeah. can be good. You um, know, about 1% of the time. Yeah. But you know what? This is actually kind of fun because I, I'm going to go back to that panel that we went to, which we talked about a lot last podcast. But um, th- the guy, uh, uh, David, who David was saying, Holland yeah, is who was saying um, uh, how important it is to make sure that everyone from everywhere can play. Because like this is like a big thing for people. He was, have no he was literally like very him. candid about the fact. And I think you'll appreciate this, Jimmy, that like he's like, yo, unless you live in like a city or like on a college campus, like we have not been successful at making it so that everybody can play and so we're we are actively trying to figure out a way to make that better Mm -hmm. um so that's good i mean like i i was very surprised in general at how aware they were of their own shortcomings Mm -hmm. um just as a development team i mean looking at it the way that he showed it he showed us like the charts for like day one and stuff he was showing like the what they expected to get like the worst possible they could get which was like five times higher on a graph and then Mm -hmm. what they actually got which was 50 times higher Wow. Uh, in terms of traffic Insane. and how on launch day the 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 team had one person uh as as their like server person oh there was gosh. one person and then eventually two and they were like sleeping in shifts in the office like trying to manage everything and opening more server space on the cloud like everywhere like here's the thing i'm not saying that uh i like it's totally understandable that like I'm not saying that they handled it badly. Oh, yeah. I'm saying that, like, after, like, three days of the Pokemon Go launch, I feel like somebody higher up should have been, like, Niantic, double your company size. We need you to, like, we need you to, like, be able to handle this. Well, they actually did. They right. actually, I mean, yeah, they actually that, had 30, and now they have 70. But that's like, a little bit down the line. Like, it should have been... They, I, well, I just feel like someone higher up should have recognized... And like made an executive decision like as quickly as possible. It's true. The um, thing is, nobody like the 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 situation for Niantic at the time was that they had just spun away from Google, and it wasn't like Google was like go. It was like they spun out from Google, and then they thought they were gonna all lose their jobs because they thought this game sucked. Right. Uh. And so when they went to launch, they were stressing out about it because they don't, they still don't think it's good enough. Um. And but they're working on it now in a way where they're like assuming that there's gonna be millions of people playing it at all times. So things like trading and things like battling. He even showed a picture of Mewtwo in his slideshow, and he was like, just chill, Mm -hmm. though. Just chill, but it's happening, but like, Mm -hmm. just chill. And he's talking about like all that stuff is stuff that they're trying to do and that they want to do, but they don't like the amount of people that are like doing, like, you know, hacking the game right now is so large that, you know, introducing trading could be like disastrous. Yeah. Could like ruin the entire metagame. And, because there's so many users, it's like a really huge security risk. So they're trying to like figure out what they can do to make it a little easier on people. But we'll see. We shall see. Yeah. Um, but that's not it for Pokemon Go because on Wednesday, which is today, uh, as we're recording this, a Pokemon Go event started called the Water Festival, which cool. runs about a week till March 29th. And during this festival, you are more likely to see Totodile, Magikarp, and Squirtle in the wild as well as their evolutions. Uh, water Pokemon from Johto will also be even more frequent around real world water areas like rivers, lakes, and oceans, in addition to Lapras, who's awesome. Uh, and you can also get a uh, Magikarp hat for your character from the style shop at, to celebrate the water festival. Be cute. Pretty good stuff. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. As of this recording right now, it's a, what time is it right now? One. Oh, it just literally right now started. As of, as of recording of this podcast, but if you're listening to it, it's already out. Just yeah. go find them. Yeah. Um, it's starting to feel like a real MMO. Like, stuff is kind of like, ever since they started rolling out the, uh, like, Christmas celebration thing, it's mm-hmm. been pretty steady. Like, every other week or so, something's oh, yeah. going on in the game. I'm feeling good about it. I wish that I could play it. Niantic, please fix my life. <laughs> please fix my game. I my just. Life. I don't know what to do. Like, if you work at Niantic and somehow you listen to the Dex podcast, number one, shame on you for not contacting me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but number number two, just help me. I don't I don't want anything. I just want to be able to log into the game again. I just want to be like everyone else. Please, I want to I want to not lose interest in this game. Please, please, please. Uh, but that is the news. That's it. You feeling good? Feeling good. I want you to know that I opened up Pokemon Go right now. Hell yeah. For the first hey. time probably since San Francisco. For checking out the water festival? Time. Uh no, not checking the water festival. I caught a grand bull and now I'm changing my style. Ah. And you're like, yo, I want that Magikarp hat, bruh. Uh 
No, I really just want a, a purple color that isn't garbage. Oh, you know what is was exciting and, and made me happy? <laughs> hmm. Um, David Holland. Uh, I have the Holland. Pokemon Go. Holland? Holland. Holland, not Holland. Holland. I have a friend named Doug Holland. Yeah. Shout outs. What's up, um, Doug? David Holland. Uh, he saw my Pokemon Go costume and I was like, can I take a picture with you? He's like, yeah, can I take a picture with you? And he took a picture with me. He was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to show it to everyone at Niantic. And I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I guess we got to make pink hair for the game. And I was like, oh. Yo, he actually cool. has the power to do it. If he does it, <laughs> if pink hair gets there. You'll know it's for you. I'll know it. I'll know it. Um, I'll know it. <laughs> but that's, in, that's it for the news, except for one more like pretty interesting sort of like speculative piece of news, which is going to be perfect for our Disgustment. <laughs> disgustment. It's, it's, you know, I, I, I'm working on it. I'm trying to make it so that it just seems natural that I like go from like talking volume to screaming volume. Mm -hmm. It's not working, but like we're here. Right we're here. Know, it's he's doing a good job. So this is the part where we argue with each other. Usually we just all agree, so yeah, it doesn't become too heated. Uh, but so here's what's up. Game Freak is hiring. This is a recent bit of news. Game Freak has been putting out a call for 3D modelers and animators for a globally popular franchise game. Okay. Uh, all signs point to Pokemon, obviously, as the job description is for a modeler that can create toon style people and monsters, and the other for a three D graphics designer to work on monsters. So oh. there are only two platforms that really seem like this is a thing for them, and I think it might be time to talk a little bit about what we think is going to happen on the Switch regarding Pokemon. Uh huh. Um, I don't yeah. think that they would be hiring modelers to work on Pokken because that's a port with maybe some extra characters added in that already exist in another version of the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't think that if it's just Pokken that they're going to be hiring 3D modelers and animators. Also, does Game Freak, Game Freak doesn't work on Pokken. Right. Well, they... They do and they don't. It's weird. Like yeah, but the like Pokemon they're not company, like the developers. I, I feel like Game Freak would not be the right. people hiring for Pokemon. Right. It's Bandai Namco that are yeah. actually the developers of that game. But it's interesting because uh, they were talking about how uh, same guy Dave Holland, Holland. Gosh darn it. Sorry, he, I put that in your head. I know. I know. I'm never gonna say it right again. Um, he was talking about how like the Pokemon company is like Disney when it comes to like their property, their properties. Mm -hmm. So who knows? But I mean, I guess this isn't even the Pokemon company. This is Game Freak. But he, I thought he, I thought he hit it on the head when he said that the Pokemon company is like a brain trust. It's mm -hmm. like basically a company that exists to a license the Pokemon brand and b like make sure it stays like true to itself. Yeah, dog. Um, I think for uh, I think well, I think it's really exciting that they're that they're calling out for more like three D modelers and designers because that means that like you know something kind of big is is on the way. Yeah. Um. Uh, obviously most people are thinking that it's the Pokemon title on the switch. Like that's, that's exciting. Right. Um, but, uh, I, I think I'm, I think I'm most excited for the fact that like this seems if they're, if they're trying to hire new modelers and like experienced modelers and stuff, I wonder if, I wonder if in a switch title, the Pokemon are going to be even more animated. Well, um, if you look at, if you look at, um, I think, I think number one, definitely they're going to have more animations mm -hmm. just because it's an actual, like, how big is Zelda? 17 gigabytes? Something like that. Like, that game is huge. All the enemies have so many different things they can do. There's there's not that many different types of enemies, but they all are, like, expressive, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that, like, considering how, how expressive Pokemon already are on the 3DS, that, like, boosting that power up to the Switch, like, number one, I think it's going to be very, like, helpful for in terms of, like, variety. Mm -hmm. But even just, like, stability and stuff is going to be so much better. Um... But do we really think, like, what other Pokemon games has Game Freak developed besides the main series games? Um, I would I would need to look that up. That's, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, not part of my encyclopedic knowledge. Like, I guess it's not, not encyclopedic. That, if not, it's that many, not that many, though. Not that many, No, though. it's not many. So, like, it's, you know, to me... And they also called it, like, quote, a globally popular franchise. So, right. like... It's not going to be like that, like cute elephant game they made, you know. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like Game Freak only has one globally popular franchise, and that is Pokemon. Literally, I'm looking at it right now. They don't. They haven't developed a single Pokemon game besides 
Besides the main series? Besides the main series. So it's definitely Pokemon main series game. Like, most likely. But the question is, like, is it going to be Sun and Moon? Is it going to be, like, Sun and Moon Plus with, like, an extra story? That's kind of what we were talking about last week is, like... Yeah, yeah, like, if it was, like, a Black and White 2 situation. Well, well, less like like Black and White 2 and more like Pokemon Sun and Moon Game of the Year Edition. Except that Uh. there was no DLC anywhere else. Like, what if it's... What if it's Pokemon Sun and Moon, and then, like, what if you just go to Sinnoh in it? Yeah. Or what if you, what if they build the gyms, you know, and all the towns? Or what if they, like, you know, I don't know, like, there's a million things they could do. What if they mm-hmm. follow Lily off on her journey? Or what if they follow, like, what if the Ash storyline comes in? That's what I want. What? That's what I want. You want I Ash want- to come in? No, I want Lily. And like, I mean, Ash, I don't know, putting him in the games like is, is it's, interesting. It's, it's, They're touching it, on it, but I like, it's don't dangerous know the territory. Is. It's dangerous territory to bring Ash to the games. <laughs> I think you would have to be a different character in the way that Misty is or something for it to yeah, really yeah. work. Um, but like, is Ash red? No, right? No, no. but not Ash, at all. Ash has a Greninja and the asshat Pikachu. Don't say that. What? You said, you said asshat Pikachu. Oh, did I? Yes. My bad. Come on. Ash hat Pikachu. Come yeah. on. Ash hat. It's Ash Pikachu. I get it. That's but all it's called. All right. Whatever. You're putting hat in there and it's not there. What, You're like, putting a hat where there is no hat. But the other Pikachus are called party hat Pikachu and like Santa hat Pikachu. Holiday hat. You mean hat. the ones in a totally different game? Whatever. You just, you just won't let this. <laughs> like you think you really don't think it sounds like ass hat Pikachu. You don't like think of that every like, single time? Like, yes, of course, that's what you're saying sounds like that, but that's not what it's called. All right, fine, <laughs> fine, 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 fine. They changed the color of Gyarados in Pokemon Go. That's another news flash that you should know about right now. What do now. you mean? What? Look, he's so much darker than he was. Oh, yeah, he's he's got like a gray blue going on. Yeah, he's like that. light sky blue. He's almost like mega Gyarados color. So what do you, so hey, what do you think Totodile. What do you think's more likely? Like Checking we, out that water that water event already kicking off. Yeah. Little Totodile. How's Little Totodile, Totodile boy. Buds. My thing is, my thing is, <laughs> is this Sun and Moon again with more or whatever it's going to be? Or is this them like, we just read that interview with Amori and Masuda that mm-hmm. like before Amori was even the director of Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby, like there was already a small team working on Pokemon Sun and Moon. Right. Yeah. So like Sun and Moon just dropped. Like, is it possible that this is like them the next making game? like Pokemon Breath of the Wild? Oh, that would be crazy because it could it could very well be like not even related to Sun and Moon. It could be like the next one. Yeah, we're, we talked about this a little bit um, last week, and we'll get into it. Uh, I think some people probably responded to that in the email. I mean, how could you not? <laughs> but uh, like the other option is that it could just be like Pokemon Stadium, which honestly, could po- be. Pokemon Stadium that just has like Pokemon Bank functionality and like a bunch of like stuff to do and like some one two switch style mini games like i wouldn't mm-hmm. be against it i that's wouldn't that's true yeah. i wouldn't mind like <clears throat> having it like because you know you can take it on the go and stuff that would be a fun game yeah but like, then again would game freak be the developer on it yeah that's true i don't know i mean like if it's if it's a main series like if it's on the switch like it might be time for them to be like maybe we do need to get involved like maybe we want to make a game that's because like you know Separate from what you guys may think of the, uh, I know a lot of people love the Pokemon Coliseum and uh, Pokemon XD, like actual game games. Right. A lot of people are wrong, but that's fine. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, it's I know. a joke. We're, I'm kidding. Yeah, we're, we're joking. We we don't like For those all games. those people that were just like, again, I'm turning this off. <laughs> Cringe. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like the actual Pokemon battling part of those games was kind of like unnecessarily similar to the Game Boy games. Does that make sense? Mm. Not like in terms of mechanics, just in terms of like presentation and whatnot. It was basically just like right now it like looks the same as like Pokemon Sun and Moon. Yeah. But with like an announcer. Yeah. Like what if this was like them doing like a standardized thing with better internet options that was like part of their official competitive Because I think that if, like, that would be the thing that makes Game Freak make the game is, like, if it's, like, going to be, like, their new way of doing tournaments or something like that. Oh, that would be crazy. That would be really cool. Because then you could run tournaments off it, like, on the Switch on the go Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. DSs, and it would kind of solve that. It would kind of give you, like, a good little buffer. 
Unless they like can just put like that into the next game. I agree. I agree. But I just think like if they're working on it right now and they're hiring like modelers, I feel like like this is pretty early in the process to hire modelers if it's not going to be something based on something that already exists. Like I think it'd be weird to hire 3D modelers for like a game that's going to come out in six years, you know, two months after the or three months after the game comes out or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm. Seems a little early in the process to be hiring modelers. Well, maybe like they, we weren't even supposed to know that they were putting out this call. I think that like just some like clevy, sneaky Pokemon sleuthers just like found this. Anytime that Game Freak puts out a job listing for a globally popular monster franchise, like everybody's listening. Yeah, that's They're true. They're like, they can't be kidding themselves there. That's true. But I don't know. I don't know. What do you think is more likely? I'm like, I'm like not sure how I feel about this. I don't know whether or not I think it's going to be like, should I be excited? Well, I mean, like, I don't know exactly how the development of games goes, like what, where in the process you are looking at modelers and where in the process you're just like conceptualizing and stuff. Like I don't have enough, I don't have enough specific on hand knowledge to know for sure. But, um, but I would like to think that it's like something totally new. I mean, I mean, I guess the only two possibilities in my mind are next Pokemon game or like the remakes for the switch. Pokemon snap two. Pokemon snap two. Do you think, do you it. think people, Oh, do it you- should be called Pokemon snap to it. Mm. Nah. Pokemon Snap Switch. No, actually, don't call it that. <laughs> don't call it Pokemon Snap to it. You're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I made a joke and it was it. not. You know, there's a difference between like a joke and like a really good idea. And this was just a joke. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not a really good idea. <laughs> um, would you would you be mad if you Ow. as as a non Switch owner would you be mad if the next Pokemon game was announced for like next year? And it's like a Me? full, like either of you guys, like Kelly, like, you know, it's fine that like we have a switch in the house that she can play, but like, you know, for something like Pokemon, like we can't really play. That's taking advantage of the switch's portable capabilities and like you'd be taking it with you, like your 3DS. Exactly. Like you kind of have to have like your I own. Like I would need a switch at that point. You kind of have to have your own switch if, if Pokemon's going to be on it. Yeah. But like, I don't, I don't, I feel to see the question. What, what's I'm the saying, question? would you be mad? Because I, I, I talk to people about this all the time. Like I've been going to a lot of conventions and a lot of people you know, because I have my Switch with me or whatever they want to talk to me about, like, Pokemon on the Switch. And a lot of people are like, I'd be cool with Sun and Moon on the Switch with, like, some extras. Um, It would be sad not to get those extras on 3DS. But if they put out a new Pokemon game, like, anytime soon, I am mad at Nintendo. And I know, and a part yeah. of that, a part of that comes down to a thing that I have a problem with, which is, like, the entitlement of the audience these days. You know? I, I just feel like okay, I just that doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you be mad? Because because they they're saying like if it comes out anytime soon, it makes Sun and Moon obsolete. No, it doesn't. Well, yeah, I mean like it puts basically a three hundred and fifty dollar price tag on the new game. Does that but, make sense? Like. I get like I, mean, I don't yeah, but like that's the, the way consoles for... work, dudes. Like, right. sorry if right. you need, if you don't want to buy the new console. Like, eventually you're gonna have to because they're gonna put games that you want on it. That's right. the whole that's the whole right. business model I, of a dude, gaming company. I, I understand. I'm just <laughs> I'm just playing I'm just playing devil's advocate because I do feel there is something to that. I mean, you're allowed to complain about it, but like to be legitimately mad about a a company who put out a new console and is gonna put about put a new game out for that console, like that's ridiculous. Like what if the Gen 4 remakes come out on Switch, for example? Great. Good, then fine. Great. Then it's the, the newest, Switch. it's the latest technology from that developer and Would you expect them to be on the three DS as well? No. I I wouldn't be surprised if they were, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they weren't. I would it's be like pleased if they were. It'd be weird But if I the, wouldn't be mad if they weren't. But wouldn't it be weird if the same generation was on two separate consoles? No. Is it would depends would, on how would the remix be the seventh gen? I imagine that they. I mean, I can't imagine that seventh seventh gen is going to last twelve months. Right. I just. It, it just seems. It just seems weird to call the remakes at part of the same gen. They, I mean, they always have been in the past. That's all right. I'm but like with things coming out the way they are, and then like totally mixing up the Pokemon formula, I don't think it's out of the question for that to not be it. And I so, think that I think that like if we get blinded by our expectations when we get a real product. We're just gonna be so, but disappointed. Then, so, but then, is your opinion of it just like, I don't care what they do. I'll buy everything they make. Anything they do is right. I don't care. No, 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 no. Not definitely not. But like, I don't think she, there was there were even not, any implications about. I'm it. not mad at them for making a decision that like, like makes sense to their business model. So what are you? So what are you hoping for as your number one? Like, what what is your ideal reality for this job posting? 
just what I said. I said I think it's either a brand new Pokemon title or uh, or like 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 the the third version, like Sun Moon Platinum. Stars, or 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 like yeah. Platinum or something on Emerald. on the Switch, a Switch version. It's like a deluxe version of the game. Like, and it, I don't think that it's you know even it might even behoove you to get the Switch version, but like. Would you, would you, what if know. it was, what if it was just Pokemon Sun and Moon again? What if it that, was? That, that I would be like, okay. Would you, would you buy it? I probably would, yeah. Would that be like the system seller for you? Is Depends that enough? Good it looks. Because that would be the only yeah. major difference, right? Is having a, a really, really crisp looking. Yeah, if there was yeah. nothing game. extra, even if it looked great, like I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't go out and buy it on launch, probably. I, what if, what if they say, what if they're like Pokemon Sun and Moon by the end of the year is mm -hmm. going to be on the Switch? Um, and we are putting out the next, like, Sinnoh games or whatever on it in, like, a year and a half. Like, I'd probably just wait for the Sinnoh games. Yeah? Yeah. I have no reason to play Sun and Moon again. I I'm interested. completely once. I, I, I'm also interested to hear from people who don't own a Switch, don't own Pokemon Sun and Moon, mm -hmm. mm. and whether or not, and who, who want that game. If they found out that it was coming to the Switch, would you buy a Switch for it? I wonder. If, I wonder if Sun and Moon is a system seller for the Switch for anyone. Hmm. For me, I would buy it immediately. Like, is I, I, I imagine I could at least do Pokemon Bank mm -hmm. on there, if not direct compatibility, which I don't think is out of the question. I don't know what the deal is with them communicating with each other or whether they're equipped to do that. But I, I feel like if that, as long as that's the case, I'm cool with another like a Gen Seven game coming out on the Switch. But I think it would it would be kind of crappy if they were like, yeah, you know what? Sun and Moon exists in a bubble. You can't trade with anyone except for people who have Sun and Moon. <laughs> and sorry. Yeah, I, I, that seems that that scenario is like worst case scenario. It seems pretty unlikely to me. I, I I feel like I feel like I'm coming at this with like a weird perspective because I've never ever been an early console adopter. Like um, I, with the exception of I think like maybe like the Nintendo 3DS, like the original one. I bought I never, that thing the I've, moment. Right. I I that I got that on launch day, but like every other console I've ever had, I've never got it on launch day. And it's not about like what game <coughs> will prompt me to get the console. It's about like, well, what three or four games are cool for this console that I can like see myself like realistically playing. Have you right bought, now it's you, just like Breath of the Wild and have there's Have you ever bought else. a home console at all? Um, I bought a PlayStation 3. Wh how far into the cycle was it? Uh, it was like a year old. Oh really? Yeah, it'd been out for like a year. Yeah, I bought my my first console that I bought for myself was my 360, and that was like a year and a half or so into the cycle. Yeah, it's like weird being around like in this office where like everybody like gets them like launch day, and I'm just like, I don't, I just have never seen the, I've just, I've just never been that kind of person. You know, to be honest, other than Nintendo, there's not a lot of consoles that I've been like super excited to get on launch. I did not buy the Xbox One on launch. I did buy the PS4 on launch because I was very excited for the PS4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was pretty justified in that purchase. Like the PS4 has turned out to be like the last great stand of the home console, like in the traditional sense, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, I do break for Nintendo though. Like I got the Wii. I waited out. I slept two nights at a Target to get a Wii. I wanted to get the Wii on launch, but that was before, you know, before like I could drive myself anywhere or yeah. anything. That was so. for Zelda. That was for Zelda. And then the Switch, same thing. Like, I pre-ordered it right away because they were like, we're launching with, like, a new Zelda. And I'm like, I'm in. But, like, for me, like, the problem is more about money. Like, right. for me, it's not about hype. Like, I, you know, I didn't buy the Xbox One because I didn't have anything to be excited about that I wasn't going to be able to get on the PS4. And then the PS4 is also, like, awesome and not made by crappy old Microsoft. <laughs> like, the Switch, for me, I'm, I'm, I bought it early because I believe in its basically like its thesis. Mm -hmm. I think that we should be moving away from like trying to make a crappy PC that plays games really well mm -hmm. as a console. I mean, that is kind of what the switch is, but like the main thing about the switch is the mechanic of taking it with you and I'm walking like, away. Psh. Yeah. And playing, Shh. making switch Ooh, commercials with your friends. Good. Record that one. Yeah, that was a good we one. Did. <laughs> it's already recorded. Um, But I don't know. Like, yeah, like I think that, I think that, the fact that the Switch is doing really well, especially in the West, is good. I'm excited that a lot of people bought it. I would have bought it if I had like had the spare cash on yeah, launch. Yeah, like you like, would have, yeah. I'm thankful for Zelda on the Wii U that I got to be able to play it 
and you know not have to wait a few months until I save up some of my spending money to go get a new console. But like, so what if you found out that the DLC, yeah, is exclusive to the Switch? Is it? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just saying, like, well, in I'm, terms of, I'm going to get Zelda on the Switch when I get. Oh, for sure. But I'm saying, imagine, imagine there's no switches in stock for six months or whatever imagine there's no switches <laughs> like it's easy if you try like remember one. <laughs> remember when the Wii came out and it was just like gone yeah forever like, it was yeah. gone for a very long time imagine imagine it's a situation like that a situation if you will a situation if you will um and then it's like yeah the dlc for pokemon is only coming to the switch you mean what? for zelda uh, well, for Zelda in this case, but like it's but basically I'm just trying to compare the two examples because like if if it's Sun and Moon again, but with like quote unquote DLC, like are you mad if that DLC is only on the new version of the game and you have to buy the new game and you have to buy everything with it? Uh, it depends. Is the does this DLC cost its own separate money? Like, are we talking like a sixty dollar version of Pokemon Sun and Moon on the Switch that's higher res? And everything, and, and then there's like a twenty dollar DLC. No, a sixty dollar version that comes with all the DLC. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be mad about it. Like, I don't know. I, I like, I'm, I, I fear saying this in case someone's gonna call me on something I've said in the past. I've probably been flip flopped on this issue based on the game or based on the sure. console That's okay. or whatever. People flip flop like, all the time. Sure. I'm just saying, like. In all these situations that you're posing, I would not be like I wouldn't be mad. I'd have no reason to be mad. I'd be like, yeah, Nint like Nintendo's doing their thing. They're like putting out the thing and they're putting DLC on it. Like I don't have to buy it. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. be mad that it's like, like I wouldn't expect them to be making DLC for the Wii U. Right. At all. It's true. Like, like you're like, well, fair enough. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Zelda is literally the last game on the Wii U. Like I don't expect them to be supporting the Wii U for much longer than yeah. this year. And you know, if you think about it in those terms, the 3DS is two years older than the Wii U. Yeah. The 3DS was definitely made to be this sort of lasting juggernaut though. I am unsure as to whether they're going to keep going with it or not, but mm -hmm. it would make total sense to me if they're, push from now on is the switch is your portable console like this is this is the next evolution of the game boy format right. that just has a home dock yeah you know honestly i think e3 like 2018 is going to be the real sort of test of what's going on with the switch i don't know what's going to happen at e3 this year i don't know if we're going to see any 3ds games i know there's a few that still need to come out like i know there's like a pikmin game that's just like not out i just really want like it's my hope that with all this Western success for the Switch, it being, uh, if don't quote me on these stats, but I read something on it. It's uh, was reported that it was like Nintendo's biggest Western console launch, correct? Or a console launch in America, correct? Of all time, correct? Um, That's crazy. That brings me high hopes that we're going to get those third-party developers showing confidence in the Switch, especially because I've heard that the dev kit is really easy to work with. It's Unreal 4. Wii U. It's Unreal 4 and Unity. Like, yes. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, also it has its own software that you can develop, but Nintendo specifically learned, like Miyamoto was talking about, like, yo, we're like super good at using Unreal. We don't use it for any of our games, but anybody who needs to make a game with us that is like trying to make a game in unreal, like let's reach out and like, let's figure out how to help them get that game onto the switch. Right. So I'm hoping this, that thing will be like the confidence booster for all of those third parties to start to make these games that take advantage of the switch. So we get switch exclusives of interesting games that can't be done in another format that use the joy cons that use the portability. Like I think we'll get some stuff, but I think likely what's going to happen is we're going to get a lot of like, wouldn't that be great if it was portable type stuff? More like, like you mean a Monster Hunter that looks not like garbage? Right. <laughs> or like a Dark Souls trilogy. You know, like I think like Skyrim is going to be a big wake up call to a lot of developers out there. Like I think Skyrim is going to come out on the Switch and sell a bajillion copies. Because I mean, it's Skyrim. I just wish that they would have done a billion copies. I well, but wish it's they would have done a, a, a Morrowind or an Oblivion. HD because we've had Skyrim for enough. Right. That, like, That's true. Like I already played like way too much of it on the PS4 and I do not want to buy it again. Yeah, but I right. like <laughs> I played a heck of a lot of Oblivion like six years ago. Yeah. So I would be like I would be prime target to be like, oh, oh portable, damn, yeah. portable Oblivion? I can just like 
to like take that. With they actually me. added uh, they added Morrowind to uh, Elder Scrolls Online recently. Right. Like, as yeah, an, yeah. As an area, that game's actually really cool. I just like MMOs. Well, it's it's like more like Destiny, but with Elder Scrolls mechanics. It's just like it's free to play. It's just like hard. Like I can't <laughs> I can't like do like several games of that scale at once. Yeah. But yeah. we're getting we're getting far away from what 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 the point of this is. The point is. I think that we're all excited for Pokemon on the Switch. I think that we would all be happy with a 3DS game ported to the Switch, even. Um, but after playing Breath of the Wild, I'm hopeful for more, and I hope it happens sooner rather than later, despite the fact that there's a little bit of anger towards that idea. You I mean, know what? All those things that you predicted, they were just waiting for the Switch version. Yeah. yeah, like all the things that you predicted that did come true. Like, yeah, all those things that you predicted that didn't come true. Watch Switch that quest version. log show up. I swear <laughs> to God, if there's a quest log, I'll be so happy. But I, I'm just going to say, like, my highest hopes would be Pokemon Snap 2 or um, a Gen 8 slash Gen 4 remakes. Big like, boy. A, like a new a big new game. Like a yeah. not sun and moon or or quote unquote stars version yeah. game. Those would be my my top two that I would like to see for sure. Um, I like obviously I'd love to see Pokken, but I don't think that's what they're hiring hiring model no. Modelers I think for. I think I think Pokken is definitely not off the table, especially since they're putting a hundred thousand dollars behind it this year uh, in prizes and stuff that mm -hmm. just got announced today. Sick. Uh, they have like there's not going to be a juniors and seniors division. It's going to be one, and there's going to be like a lot of prize money. Mm. Cool. Um. So there, there is Pokemon this year. So I imagine that we're going to see some sort of update for it on the Switch. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Did we get how, to how cool would gigantic, humongous, like forty level Pokemon Snap two be? <laughs> it would be I so would sick. Die. Like, like a little bit more like gamified. Like, like every a lot Pokemon more stuff, in take it. Take pics well, of it. Like even if they did half the Pokemon, there'd still be four hundred Pokemon. Or like <sighs> levels where it's like. Yo, like it's winter time now. Like, oh yeah, like Sauce like seasons on the same level, or, or like day and night time. Yeah, like yeah, it's raining <gasps> in real life, and like, just like they could, they don't even have to like make this like fake region that has like Doug like Doug Trio Mountain in it. They can just be like to Kanto. Like yeah, go to Kanto now. Go to Hoenn now. Like journey to the Pokemon the Snap Two main character Lily. Oh my god! Kanto. Oh. All right, all right, all right. She never took a picture of anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the end, what it comes down to is the anger issue that people feel about new stuff is like it's consumerism versus like, er, like enjoying art. Right? I think this is what I want to say about this is like, of course, we're all going to be bummed that we don't like that we can't afford or that we don't get to do this thing like right away, this thing that we want right away. But like, we have to also understand that like, this is a company, they're trying to make money and a lot of their business decisions are made without our knowledge and without like, we don't know why they're why exactly they're doing the things that they do, but like, of course there's a reason. Well, but also it is a business. Like, yeah, it is a business. You do they have, have to, to pay for stuff sometimes. <laughs> like, that's that's the thing that I was, like, I, I, was, I was sort of making a kerfuffle on Twitter a couple weeks ago when people were um, like, sort of like talking about paid DLC for Zelda and the hard mode and stuff, which by the way, you're right. I do feel like the game is unfinished and empty without the stuff that I'm paying twenty dollars for. Just kidding, the game is enormous. But like, <laughs> like in the end, right? Like, we all just want the new content for Zelda. Like, why wouldn't we want more stuff for Zelda, right? But you know, when you put a price tag on it, it's it's always going to make somebody angry because people don't have infinite money, right? See, the thing with that is when I said my piece on that on Twitter people like fought me on it as if I was like angry and declaring the game was bad and I'm like I'm just saying we don't know if the game is good yet and I now that I know that I love Breath of the Wild I still stand by what I said which is like like I don't like DLC being announced before the game is out because that gives me trepidation because there are so many games out there who announced DLC before the game came out, and lo and behold, the game is garbage because they just cut the game in half and sold it another part of it to you. It's but true. But like, it didn't happen this time. But I being cautionary and like being cautious about it is not a bad thing. Right, but it's also not the same thing as yelling at somebody when they bring up the idea that there might be the next gen of Pokemon games on another console that you have to buy. You know what I mean? Like. 
like what you're saying is reasonable and well thought out and like very clear about like demarking like what you're actually saying. Yeah. But I think that that I don't think that means there isn't a trap for people to fall into of getting mad just because they have to pay for something. Because yeah, it happens I, all the time. For for stuff like that, my go to like I think that food analogies are good because everybody eats food, so it's everybody easy to relate loves to food. Yep. Um just because some people have ulcers doesn't mean that that every place should stop making spicy food. Exactly. Like there, what if, if there's a ramen shop that's just like all we do is spicy ramen and it's different levels of spicy, but it's all spicy. Like, sorry, people with ulcers, but it's not meant for you to eat it. Like, like but other people can eat it. Yeah. Imagine and, if you had to skydive. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I'm getting scared just thinking yeah. about it. Imagine if you had to. But that's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know that that might come off as harsh and like, but it's just like a it's reality. Actually, like, it's actually not harsh. I mean, ha- I mean, every every business has a demographic. Yeah. And you don't just get to be in every demographic yeah. because that's not how the world is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, dudes, I don't own a switch right now. It's I a waste. Wish I did. It's but a like, waste of time yeah, to same. complain about things like that. Sometimes, if if a new Pokemon game comes out like in the next week and it's on the switch i'll be like wow man i really wish i could play that but i'm not gonna be like upset like because F nintendo oh man Greedy. filling out their library on their new console how dare yeah exactly making it a worthwhile purchase exactly scoff but in the end we are all very excited for a new 3d pokemon game hopefully hopefully Snap something too. sick comes to the switch really soon um hopefully it's not just for a weird Magikarp based iPhone game. Um, but Wait, that's, I'm getting the Magikarp hat right now. Yeah, but that's for that's the discussment. Uh, let's just, I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of things to say about this, so I'm just going to quickly jump into the Fancers segment. Fancers, da 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 da. Fancers, da 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 da. Great. Okay, so Fancers, if you guys have something you want to say, I know that. A lot of people disagree with our opinions on pay- paying money for things that people make. But if you if you do have something that you want to say, come reach out to us, thedexcast at gmail.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's right there on the screen. Again, that's T-H-E-D-E-X-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. We'll read your responses to this week's episode on next week's episode. But right now, we're going to read last week's responses that was <laughs> lots of lots of next and last and you get furthermore. it we're about to read some emails that people already sent us because we can't read emails from the future true ready yes yeah. cool this one's from this one's called vgc rules it's from zachary it goes like this hey dexcast crew i was listening to the newest dexcast and while you guys were talking about vgc rules it hit me what if you just couldn't use specific items like sorry no air balloon chestoberry life orb etc like wouldn't that be so cool I think it'd be neat to see the new strats that evolve from this. Even a tournament would be fun to watch with these kind of rules. Later, man. Zachary. P.S. Sorry for the long email. DFTBA. I have good news, Zachary. The special battle rules, the the one that is uh, coming out like now is Z-Crystals only, which means like you can't use all those cool special items. That's I, that's kind of fun. I like how I like how Pokemon like puts that kind of stuff out there. But like, uh, but yeah, I, I would. It would be great to see like a monthly rotation of special rules and like a backlog archive. So you could be like, oh, I really liked the uh, the scary Pokemon only. That's pretty much I mean, that's pretty much what special battle is. It, it rotates out every just every once in a while and it gives you new things. But I think just even thinking about this this way is good because it it, it, it makes it clear to people who maybe don't know this that like part of like competitive video gaming and part of the reason it's so exciting and unique that uh, from you know physical competition is that like you can just mix it up all the time and like you know VGC sixteen looks nothing like VGC seventeen and that's completely by design because each year they're trying to just like mix it up and like try and respond to the things that are happening mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know we should be grading them on whether or not they were successful at mixing it up rather than like some sort of sense of like well legendaries are not like supposed to be on your team like there's only one of them in the world so it's breaking the canon like that that stuff i understand i understand the anger there but like 
I think it's just fun to be like now battle with this situation, you know, because if it's yeah. about battling, like that's more fun for me, like mm-hmm. switching it up. Like that's why people always talk about, um, you know, Call of Duty versus Battlefield. Battlefield, people actually play, or CSGO, people actually play that competitively because it's the same game, uh, but they just change up the rules or League of Legends. Like it's the same actual game that you own, but every year LCS is a little bit different. You know what I mean? Like the levels change or the 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 like the the champs get rebalanced yeah, or whatever. Like they reach they change completely how wards work and so the strategy in the game becomes a completely different thing. Right. It keeps the same game going for a long time. Like compare League of Legends or Pokemon to basketball and baseball, right? But something like Call of Duty, it'd be like if like they were like, all right, baseball's over, now we're doing Griff Ball. Like that this is gonna be the new <laughs> game. You know what I mean? This now Griff we're gonna play ball. Slurms ball. Like, it's like now, you know, we had to knock down all our stadiums, completely build new leagues. Like, this is how you extend the life of a game and make the, the scene around it healthy. Uh, so, good stuff. I don't know, like, hold items. I love hold items. I think it would be... I think he's just saying, like, what if you didn't allow specific hold items? Um, and that's been the case for some time. Like, certain things are like that. Like, you can't have the... Uh, what, what What's the orb that the Lattes hold? Oh, oh, lustrous orb. Yeah, like you or no, whatever that's, it is. No, uh, that's not it. Whatever it is, like you can't the soul do. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah, you better. can't use the soul do because it like breaks the game stuff like that. Like there's some things like that, uh, but I think it would be more fun. Yeah, like it would be a fun thing to like change that emphasis. I don't I know. Think, <laughs> I think that a no items meta would be ev- all acrobatics all the time. <laughs> yeah, it would be acrobatics <laughs> and like the fastest Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. Feromosa all day. Um, but dude, I'm in. Also, your email was two lines long, so don't be sorry, bro. Not so long. What is DFTBA? Do I not know what that is? Am I like an old man who doesn't? DFTBA. Sounds like an anagram. Uh, Is it it a joke from the decks? It could be. be We make a lot of jokes. I I just, I hope I don't sound like an old man. Dex files to be announced. Hell yeah. Mm. Dex files to be announced. Good hype. Uh, (laughs) Thank you for that email, Zachary. Uh, Next email comes from Thomas. It's called A Clean New Idea. Hey, DexCast, I'm going to cut straight to the point, but not before a little sugar for you all. Thank you so much for getting me back into Pokemon. Soon I'll be on my way to the competitive scene, but that's another story. Anyway, I was thinking about something for a while now, and I wanted your thoughts on it. As someone who is a graphic designer and an artist, I simply don't see the cool appeal in shinies aside from the rareness and a changed color palette. Don't get me wrong, that's neat and all, but imagine this. Dramatic pause. What if there were rare models instead? For example, you're out in the sea and all of a sudden you stumble upon a surfing Pikachu. Or you're out in the Safari Zone and you run into a Squirtle Squad member. Do you like the idea? And if so, what special Pokemon would you love to run into? Thanks, everyone, and have an amazing day from Thomas. Hashtag stop shaming long emails. Hashtag they aren't even that long. Hashtag (laughs) surfing Pikachu all day. Hashtag join the Dex Discord. Hashtag submit your art. They have a room for it and everything. (laughs) First Uh, of all, thanks for the email, but I absolutely love this idea. Second of all, Crystal Onyx. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Every every silly thing from the anime that they did, like third of all, Pink Orange Grimehorn. Islands. Yeah, like, but I would love to see something like um like, uh, like give me like a Sharpedo, but there's maybe like a like a fishing hook like you know stuck through it, like one of those like oh it's the the shark that can't he be got caught. Away. Like, like that classic legend. Got or like something. harpoon sticking out all yeah, his back, yeah. but he's like I don't care. Like maybe that one's a bit morbid, but like. I would love to see like a battle scarred, like, oh, it's a scyther, but it has a whole bunch of notches in its its blades. Like Yeah, yeah. It would give him a lot more personality and like history. If it was slow bro, but he has it's a slow bro, but he has speedboat scars. What if it was nature based? (laughs) What if it was like nature based? Oh, like a like an adamant one is like all like He's all like rough and like a timid one is like is like maybe smaller and like a little bit more like like glows. Yeah. Yeah. But like or I when you said nature based, I thought you meant like Oh, like where nature. they are, like a so mossy. Like, oh, like maybe there's like a golem out there or something that just has like barnacles all, all on him. Oh, like a like a g- golem found by the beach with barnacles, or like a forest golem with moss. Yeah, like that would be great. That'd and be you know so what they cool. They say a rolling golem gathers no moss, unless they do say that he wants to a roll out, and golem. then he can put it in his hands and just eat a it like em. a sloth. Ew. No, sloths don't eat moss. They grow moss though. They grow moss? On like their on fur, their yeah. fur, like they move so slowly that it's like fine for plants to grow on them. Yeah, I love this idea. I think this is awesome. I don't I, I like shinies. I definitely do. 
I wish that there were more types of shinies per Pokemon at least. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. think now we're at the point, like, especially if we get to the Switch, where it's going to be like, oh, you like variation? Get ready, See, bro. I think that especially this idea would be cool if um, not just like rare models, like with the stuff that we were talking about with like, oh, like add personality, but you can do something like, uh, like the you know, Alpha Heracross or something. Like, oh, it's like the leader of the pack, you know him well, et cetera. Yeah, like, and he has like a little bit different. Just has like a like a much bigger horn or something. Yeah, it's and like, like male and female, but like more But obvious. like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like based on something in the world as opposed to just like, and also I think that they could do with making the male and female models more widespread and also more noticeable. Or maybe if they had some like perfect IVs, like then you have like really big claws. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Now, I mean, I know that they probably aren't going to, like, do, like, that much variation, like, to change the size of all the models and stuff like that, but, like... It would be a lot of work and a lot of programming, but it would be a cool detail, and I would love to catch, like... I'd love to spend my time catching something that I'm, like, like, check it out. I, I got, like, the cool... You will never believe that I got this. Yeah, I'd cool be down. Budo. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be down. Cool I, I legit would be down for that. Um, But, yeah, thank you for the email. I'm 100% I'm into that. Um, it's like those uh, those like Tumblr posts that have like regional like they called them regional variants even even before it came out like those like yeah. Leafeons that are like stealth pine, pine cool Leafeon and like Tropic Leafeon that kind of stuff yeah stealth yeah. stealth has, hashtag stealth mega coolzard <laughs> yeah <laughs> um okay thank you for that email this next one is called hand holding in Pokemon it's from Mark with a C hey Dexcast Mark with a C here listening to the last episode and the email about hand holding in Pokemon and wanted to give my two cents. Uh, just for context, Jimmy, somebody was saying that this game was pretty hand holdy. Uh, I think Pokemon, Moon? Yeah. yeah. I think Pokemon has always held your hand through the story, but it's the presentation of the newer games that are making people have issue with it. In the early games, you pretty much just went in a straight line to your destination with HMs providing literal roadblocks. However, these were presented with the mechanics. You knew you couldn't leave Cerulean City to the east because there was a tree in the way, not a cutscene where your buddy shows up like, whoa, look at that tree we can't get past. <laughs> and it's the introduction of all these friend characters that seem to be the real issue people have rather than the hand-holding. The conversation about those characters has already been had a lot so i won't go into it too much but i think that the issue is more that being told by the characters in game where to go feels much more like it breaks the flow of the game rather than being stopped because you need a certain item so yeah pretty much i think that the games have always held your hand it's the presentation that proves to be the sticking point for people keep up the great work regards mark with a c mark uh, with a c you're hashtag very smart over man. 50 hours into breath of the wild hashtag only one dungeon finished hashtag sorry for the email <laughs> <laughs> in general mark i think this is a very well said and like like great response to the to that hand holding feel because like as alex was reading it, i was like yeah that you know that is true um i think that as pokemon has evolved mm -hmm. um it has uh it's it's like the issue of like the silent protagonist right like you know you have your silent protagonist because they want it to be like you like yeah. you know yeah, they want it to be you and they want story. you to project what you think is cool onto that so like in the very first game when a tree blocks your way you're like mm, I figured it out I have to get something to unblock this tree whereas like yeah of course when Hal is like oh we gotta figure out how to unblock this tree you feel like well yeah of course I knew that like stop trying to hold my hand yeah. I feel like it's the same thing when like somebody like somebody that you know like tells you something and you're like well yeah I already know how to do that like but thanks for the advice. Nobody likes being told what to do. They like to they like to feel like they came up with it themselves. Yeah, I I, I definitely agree. I, I think a large part of that though is that like Pokemon has made the decision to like go a little bit more on the story. Mm -hmm. But I think they need to like go ham on the story or not at all, or make your make your character a part of the story for reals. Because yeah, I think that yeah, because like yeah, in Sun you're a little bit dead eyed you basically oh just like and so it's weird it's every, weird to be like the silent protagonist scene, in that <laughs> every cutscene where it's like dun 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 something happening and it zooms over to your character with You're the just blankest like, slightly mm -hmm. smiling smile yeah, yeah. Oh my god so I, I think i think that is a definite shortcoming in the sun and moon games i think they needed to make the decision like is the player character gonna gonna like be reacting like everyone else or is it are we still gonna do this like weird silent protagonist thing yeah if we're I talking think, about if yeah. we're talking about like <laughs> new games that don't do this I hate to talk about it again, but look at Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild has like sort of like a story. It does definitely have like a good story mm -hmm. and like a story like about people as much as it is about the world events. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's told sort of separately from the game, like everything has pretty much already happened except for the last fight, really. Mm -hmm. You know, like 
and you're like reliving it, it separates your gameplay experience from your lore experience. Mm. And I love stuff like you go to the Dezora domain and you're like walking around and there's just like history tablets yeah. everywhere. And, you know, like that's always been my favorite part of Pokemon anyway. It's like Libraries. The, the, you know, finding out something by accident, the library, like reading uh, the journal about type null, like just things that like, what? I found this. Like Pokemon is a game about exploration and adventuring that doesn't have that much exploration and adventuring in it uh, of its own, like other than like looking for items and stuff. Yeah, that's that's true. And I think I think a little bit more. uh I think a little bit more of your own agency in the story would go far towards removing the sort of handholdy feeling because you're kind of just like watch. You're kind of just like Nick Carraway. Like you're just like kind of watching everything happen and like, you don't really matter other than that. You're just never lose at battling. Like people yeah. just use you to like beat guys that they can't beat. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think like that's, that's the mistake. Like as much as like your mom is a real character, like you're not. Um, and you don't it, like, but no matter how you feel about characters, you have no choice in the matter other than to like get a different response out of them. But it never like changes anything about what happens. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I think that Pokemon has always been pretty handholdy, but like it like, you know, it stops you even in the old gen one, and two games to be like, you can't go this way until you do the thing. And it's like, OK, I get it. But like, I, like. Right, because they're spoon feeding it to you, it feels worse. Right, but in the the farther the series has progressed, the more it like clearly points at a thing, and it's like, hey, you need to do this over here. And the also the more convenience they've added in the games, it's a weird like they've been getting progressively better and progressively more like this is a game for kids for the right. longest time. <clears throat> um, it's also infinitely worse for somebody like me who's like just dying to get to the meat of my gameplay experience. Yeah, it's... I, I think that the assessment that, like, it's mostly because of how they present it is very true because it's like... If they just made it a quick, snappy, like, screen flashes over here and shows you that there's a tree and, like, that's it, then, like, fine. But yeah. it's, you're right. It always is, like, Hal who comes in and he's like, whoa, eating malasadas. Look at that tree. Isn't that neat? All right, gonna go by and, like, takes you know three minutes yeah. of your time and it's like by the uh, end of the game like when i'm like 300 hours in i like have completely disassociated with any of the characters that i was with during the main story like i don't care about them anymore i mean lily left an effect on me like she has she felt like i really felt like i had a relationship with lily yeah but other than that like i just feel like and she's like gone so it's like other than that like <laughs> there's like you know the more i get into my own world of the game separate from what's happening in the sun and moon story. Like I, I do feel better about the game. And so, you know, sometimes you forget, but like playing it through that first time, it did feel a little tedious at points. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, I, I think that's something that they are aware of and that they're working on just judging by the way the games are trending, at least now that we have Omori on there instead of Masuda. Mm -hmm. Masuda literally was like a lot of the stuff I, I never even thought about because it just works for people. People like it. Why, why mess with it? Right. Mm -hmm. but, but sometimes innovation breeds. Yeah. Well, Mori's people. like, yo, now yeah. that I'm like free to do this, like I'm going to approach this like it's a brand new thing. So that's really cool. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's where it's at. Um, but yeah, thank you for that email. Thank you. Um, Mark with a C. This next one is called cool history thing I found. And it's from Luke, Wendy and their real life whooper buddy. Aw. He's cute. Um, mm -hmm. there's pics. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll describe the pics to you. Sure. Hey all, I think I found a tidbit of real world history and mythology hidden in sun and moon that blew my mind and I just had to share. Yes. After watching Moana, I did some research and found out that Maui's giant hawk form is actually based on the extinct Hast's eagle, the largest raptor yet recorded, predator of the 12 foot moa, and likely humans on occasion, and actually recorded in native New Zealand folklore as the pukai. We're able to get a fairly accurate estimate of its coloration from various descriptions in these stories. What does this have to do with Pokemon? Just check out these depictions. Now, this bird is completely bright orange on the top mm -hmm. and basically checkered black and white on the bottom of its wings and body. What? And it's huge. And it just, it, these are these pictures look like they're from like the 70s. Right. Look familiar? These pictures are pretty old too. Has Talonflame been a Hast's eagle in addition to a falcon this whole time? Huh. I looked up just how big Hast's eagle was. 
Females averaged 1.4 meters long and males were smaller at 0.9. The average of those, rounded to Pokedex format, 1.2. Oh. How tall is Talonflame? 1.2. Nice. I gotta Whoa, see this numbers. Bird. We know they had a gen. We know they had Gen Seven in mind when making a six, so it's possible they were trying to decide between Fletchling and Picky Peck for Lola, and went with Picky because it's more obviously tropical. Who knows? Either way, I love when Pokemon shows its work. Sorry for the big pictures, Luke, Wendy, and our real life Wooper Bubby pictured. And then he says, "P.S. Alolan Talonflame should be Fire Ghost like Decidueye." Hashtag Extinct Birdie Buddies. Now look at these birds. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What? It's straight right, up just I a need, picture of Talonflame. That looks sec. just like Talonflame. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Like, legit, like, it's Talonflame. The s- wow. <laughs> like, it's just Talonflame. Like, that's it. That's all there is to it. That's Yo, awesome. Hashtag Seagull. I love that. Hashtag I, just Talonflame. Yeah, hashtag, hashtag that's... Hashtag Eagle. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag that's hashtag Talonflame. Hashtag. Hashtag hashtag. Hashtag. I hate hashtags. All right. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that's... Some serious evidence right there. Yeah, that's I really that's, cool. I think that's that's so on the nose that it's like very convincing to me. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Look up, you know, Dexcast homework. Google a picture of the Hast Eagle. Try and find this picture of it, like Diving taking out this Moa. This, yeah, it's hilarious. And there's like a caveman, like, oh my god, <laughs> like let's 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 do it. And also, shout out to this really really cute animal. It's little, cute. Your little salamander. Your little salamander boy. Yeah. He's a cute. Real life boy. whooper. Very cute. Uh yeah. Let's just do like two more. Sure. Yeah. Sound good? Thank you for that email. This one comes from actually there's no name with this one. It's called Zelda. Zelda. Oh, right. I made a competitive Pokemon team. Hey, Dexcast, call me whatever you want. I just want to start off by saying that Alex is literally the best person. I've been watching Super Beard Bros since I don't even know when anymore, year one. And same for the Dex, Bulbasaur episode. And I just want to say, no matter how how my day is going, good or slightly less good, I can always look forward to listening to the podcast or watching you be bad at driving in Cop Bros. I would ask, but we all know you're still cops. Um, holy Magikarp, I got sidetracked there. Anyway, I thought I would talk about my Pokemon week since the beginning of March. 120 hours into Zelda and thinking about booting up Sun version once. <clears throat> Seriously, Breath of the Wild makes all of the games look worse in comparison. I did play some Phoenix Wright, though. Anyway, sorry, this isn't the most Pokemon field email, but you need to hear how great you are along with how much of my life I've committed to <laughs> Zelda, trying to Gerard it. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll leave with some hashtags. Oh, also, Kelly, you're great to... I love seeing you in the decks, the podcast, those few episodes of Super Maker Bros where you were on. And Jimmy, if you're there, good Hi. job editing the decks and Thanks. the J-Wits. Hashtag <laughs> Zelda boys. Hashtag Alex is the best. Hashtag I charge my DX for Phoenix Wright. Hashtag this email looks long on my phone, but it's probably not long at all. Hashtag 300 hours into Pokemon Sun. Hashtag and another 40 in Moon. Hashtag Amolga is the best Pokemon. Hashtag actually it's mischievous. Oh, and I'm going to send in more different emails because I can't fit everything into one. And I'm not going to write a book because Alex is biased towards short emails. And this probably isn't actually being read. (laughs) If it is, you've made my year. Well, you're made. Hey, you know what? Link, the hero of time. You rule. You crushed it, you Link, rule, the hero of time. Thank you, Link. That's awesome. They you, said we could call him whatever. Him Link? Yeah, okay, because, because you they can call said we call him whatever. whatever we want. I was going to so. come up with something, but you got to it You're first, Link, so. the hero of Hyrule. Thank Congrats you. Congrats on that. I'm Good so job. I'm so glad that you saved Hyrule. Thank you. <laughs> Heck yeah. And thank you for the kind words. That was very nice of you, too. And I guess congrats on your Pokemon team. Yeah. yeah. Though I don't. Not I guess, like definitely congrats. Well, I, I just, I thought that he was going to like talk about it or mention it in some way in the email, but other other than saying that he did it, but like 300 hours, that's no, nothing to sneeze at. Nothing dude. to sneeze at. Don't I'm getting, sneeze. I'm, 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 I'm nothing just cro- to sneezel. Yeah, nothing to sneezel at. I'm crossing mm-hmm. hour 100 right now of my playthrough of that game, and I'm finally like, I feel like I'm playing Pokemon again. It's pretty exciting. Sick. Um, But yeah, thank you for that email. That was really cool. Uh, Let's just do one more. Sure. Uh, this one's from Battle Girl Leah, and it's called Dragon Breath of the Wild. Oh. oh. Ahoy hoy, Dexcast. Battle Girl oh, yeah. Leah here. Uh, I'm so glad that the Breath of the Wild X Pokemon discussion came up on your AOD 2017 podcast because it's a concept that came to mind as soon as Breath of the Wild was released. Pokemon has typically been a pretty or lin- pretty linear game, falling root to root with towns, cities, and story beats in between. In an open world Pokemon experience, this could lead you discovering a gym that would typically be a higher level before you're ready for it. While I have loved finding things stronger than me in Zelda, why not take a cue from Pokemon Origins and have gyms match your own level? I'm thinking of when Ren challenges Brock and Brock picks a low-level team since Red did not have any badges at the time. 
Can, why, can I pause? That was such a cool moment, and I'm totally 100% on, on your yeah. team with that. Why okay. not have all gym leaders in the region have eight different team sets that depend on the amount of badges that you have? Yep. You yep. could visit whatever yep. city you like at any time and yep. challenge any gym you feel like yes. instead of the usual prescribed order. <sighs> this could even apply to Pokemon that you encounter in the wild. Maybe the badges you own draw out more and more higher level than rare Pokemon, with each route having a tier list of Pokemon that are available depending on your current badge count. Yep. The same could even go for trainers as well, with stronger trainers appearing across routes when they hear of your latest gym exploits. If you want to keep Breath of the Wild surprised at finding enemies you aren't ready for, why restrict the player only to roots? Maybe the weaker trainers and more common Pokemon could appear within the safety of roots, but stronger Pokemon and trainers could be found beyond the boundaries of roots where things are more wild and dangerous. Like Zelda, you can go off the path if you want, but you'll most likely have your butt handed to you if you aren't ready. <laughs> also, as reluctant as Game Freak is to break tradition, I think they're going to eventually have to go ahead and put visible wild Pokemon in the overworld. A conservative RPG like Dragon Quest eventually did it, so why can't Pokemon? I didn't intend for this email to be as long as it is, but I'm just so in love with exploring in Zelda right now. Thanks for taking the time to read this, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Battle Girl Leah, hashtag thank me for the long email. This was still not that long of an email. Hashtag Tropius represent, hashtag banana chin. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the long email. Just to give you guys some context if you missed last week's episode somehow, uh, the idea that I floated for Gen 8 on the Switch was, what if instead of there being eight badges that you get just from beating gyms, what if there's like one or 200 badges that you get because you're like a Boy Scout type person? Oh, okay. And you just get like achievement badges. And yeah. then like you go and to the Pokemon League and they're like, oh wow, you're really great at animal handling. Yeah, like you can you can get badges doing a lot of different things and there's quests and it's open. Yeah, like you can you can get like a uh, rock type expert for capturing all of the rock type Pokemon in the Pokedex. Yeah, exactly. Or all of the one in the region. Yeah. And then yeah. people would like, you know, maybe you get to like get some sort of title from or the, the rock type. You know, the leader. Celadon City Beauty badge and you you won the beauty contest there. Right. Or you get a badge for like helping some dude who was like stuck on the side of the road and it turns out he's like the president of Silphco, you know, like just tons of different stuff. There's so many different things you can do with Pokemon. Um, it's, it's dope. I think that, uh, visible wild Pokemon is a little bit of a stretch. Um, I think I'm, it would, mm, the only thing yeah. I would like is it would let you pick what Pokemon it is, but I would want the actual encounter to be symbolized at least. Like I would like it to be like, okay, like maybe you see a Bulbasaur, mm -hmm. like you, you go to it and you don't know whether it's going to be a shiny Bulbasaur or you don't know whatever, whatever. Right. But I think I think that just because of the mechanics of Pokemon that I like the random battles still. It, it would be very cool, like thinking of this this overworld thing where like you, uh, you know, run and you like see a wild Pokemon and you go and you like run into it as the encounter and then does the din -din -din -din, but it just kind of freeze frames for a second and maybe like does like a flicker animation, but then it just like transition it's just like pans the camera around and makes where you are the like a, a tiny like arena it'd be so hype if like they could like react like irl like like to like a rock and like <laughs> yeah. maybe like jump off it if they're close enough to it to like do the move and like make the battling less about like just visually less about like waiting yeah it's the thing is is like They've kind of bottlenecked themselves with how many Pokemon that they put in the, in their games. So I doubt we're ever going to get something really animated with all of those Pokemon. I think I think it could be a little bit more exciting than it is, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I also like the idea of like I mentioned this last week, but like think about like in Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby where you can like fly around on Latios. Yeah. Like imagine that just being like what fly is. Yeah. Like, imagine just flying over, like, the map of Breath of the Wild on a bird. Ugh. Like, it'd be really sweet. Like, you wouldn't even need to have fast travel in that game at oh, that like, point. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I, I, I see, now that I see how successfully Nintendo transitioned Zelda into that type of game while staying so true to the spirit of Zelda, I'm a much more optimistic person about an open-world Pokemon game, like a large-scale one. I'm still not into the idea of an MMO really, and I'm still not into the idea of, like, that weird, like, what if it's every region? Pokemon Rainbow. <laughs> um, but I love the idea of it being, like, big and open and immersive more. Like, there's a little bit more, like, control for the character. Maybe there's, like, some climbing and swinging around and stuff that you can do as the trainer. 
Mm -hmm. I think that's all cool stuff. And I'm, I'm really excited um, about the idea of that. And I think we are going to get something similar to that, but like that goes back to what, uh, what he was saying that what's the, I forget the guy's name who was saying it. I forget actually who it was, who said it might've been the president of Pokemon company, but he was talking about how these games are just going to be totally different. Like looking at the switch, like it's like developing from, you know, for the, ps1 mm -hmm. and then suddenly developing for the ps4 right like it's it's gonna be crazy so get ready for some crazy paradigm shifts in the pokemon world yep my only hope is that they stay true to the battle system i think that would be the one thing that really would bum everyone out is like throwing away i don't i'm not saying keep it exactly the same but i think just like the idea of it being like a mental game yeah is very important mm -hmm. to what pokemon is I yeah 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 I, Again, I am very a very firm believer that the Switch is intended to be the next console for Nintendo, but replaces also, not only the Wii U but the 3DS as right. well. Right. It is it is like where the branching paths return to one and it's like like what started forever ago with the Game Boy and the NES is now they have converged and is now the Switch and it's meant to be a portable console. I don't think that a main series Pokemon game on the Switch will diverge from the paradigms of Pokemon, but it will take much. advantage. Mm -hmm. But it will take advantage. Yeah, like, it'll it'll do different things, but I think it's going to keep the core the same. Like this would be the game that we see played at Worlds twenty twenty or whatever. You know, right? Exactly. Like, so they like they would keep their VGC style it's similar enough. I think. I don't think yeah. it would be like it's kind of like a fighting game, mini game, <laughs> or like you know Pokemon Go's battle stuff or anything right. like that. Yeah, I think I think I think it's going to definitely be an evolution of what we already have. Um, but for me, also like, I'm very interested to see the future of lo-fi gaming on the Switch. Like, it's already kind of happening, right? Like, I am Setsuna costs like thirty or forty dollars, and mm -hmm. it's like you know a two D. Well, it's not two D, but it's like a smaller game. Same thing with Afterbirth. It's like forty bucks instead of sixty bucks, and it's like a you know two D game or Shovel Knight's like twenty five dollars, like. There's nothing about the Switch that says that every Switch game, even if it's in a box, is like 50 bucks or anything like that. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very excited to see what that means for the Switch. Like, I feel like people will still play games that are not as, like, sexy as Zelda is. Mm -hmm. Like, Bomberman being another, like, large game, like a, like, a, like a full game that's being released that's, like, you know, a lot less in scope. Right from Breath of the Wild, like, you know, say what you will about the price, but, like, you know, just the idea that those games are are um, sort of, like, less a AAA console experience and more of a, like, AAA portable experience yeah. is interesting to me, and I'm, and I'm interested to see how that pl plays out. You know what I mean? Like, what's the Fire Emblem going to look like? Oops, sorry, I just bumped my mic. You know? What's the Fire Emblem going to look like? What's the Mario going to look like? Like, I really want to know the answer to these questions. Yep. And I, I think that that's going to be, yeah, I think that's going to be really important to the future of Pokemon too. Um, but thank you for that email, Leah. This is where we end today. If you guys want to, uh, you know, write an email for us to read, please send it in to the Dexcast at gmail.com. That's T H E D E X C A S T at gmail.com. Again, if you guys are uh, fans of us and you run a company or you <clears throat> work for PR in a company and you want to advertise with us, let us know. Send us an email. Um, send it to thedexcast at gmail.com or find me on Twitter. Actually, is even better. Or email me personally at my personal email. I would love to do some sponsorship on here, but uh, I keep getting offers from like companies that have no idea who I am and don't want to really do anything with us that's n not totally impersonal. Yeah. So please, if you have anything like that, please let us know. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, I'm Alex. I'm Jimmy. And I'm Pokekills. We will see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.
Later, Later man. man.